This was a tip from Mitch Connor in Discord. Due to Obama's civil rights laws in 2014, schools are now not punishing black teens. Yeah. And so they're not getting punishment at home. They're getting cursed out and yelled at by their mothers. And now they're not being punished in schools for acting out. In fact, this, t- this type of thing has been going on a long time. Like Trayvon Martin should have been arrested for the stuff that he was doing in school. Yeah. And he wasn't. And then there was another. There's and one of the reasons things. that uh, wasn't uh, punished was because of this law, right? Well, that was this, not s- this specific law because this was 2014, which is after he died. Uh, so it's been oh, okay. going on a long time, though. When did he die? What year? 2012. I don't time goes. I, it loses me at times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So according to the New York Post, Paul Sperry writes in the New York Post, Obama's lax discipline policies made schools dangerous. Isn't that just like black people? Turn it into a ghetto. Yeah. Obama did this. This is, did not come from the white man. It came from Obama, folks. Not only did he not do anything about the situation in the urban area with the black-on-black crime, he made sure that black-on-black crime get worse in the public school system. I, 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 I'm, I'm a warrior. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> a warrior of the devil. Okay, go ahead. So I have some examples. One is from a former St. Paul, Minnesota science teacher, a white man, was beaten and choked by a 16-year-old black student who allegedly came up behind him, calling him an effing white cracker, put him in a stranglehold before bashing his head into the concrete wall and pavement, giving him a concussion and brain damage. John Ekblad still suffers short-term memory loss and hearing problems two years after the December 2015 attack. He says school violence is still rising out of control. And so he was attacked by a black... 16-year-old. 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. The teacher. Yep. Amazing. We showed his picture up there. Yeah. All right. I have, I have other stories. Um, Harrisburg, PA. At least 45 teachers quit due to more than 100 assaults on teachers and a three-year backlog of expulsion cage, cases. Kids slapping, kicking, scratching, and spitting on others. Black kids. Yeah. So lovely. Harrisburg. Uh, Buffalo, New York. A teacher was kicked in the head. And says that kids walk around and say, we can't get suspended. We don't care what you say. Charlotte, North Carolina, more than 300 staffers were hit by students in the last reported school year. Assaults on faculty climbed two years in a row as schools implemented Obama's reforms. Silver Springs, Maryland. uh, Students brought knives and threatened teachers. Repeat offenders get a pass, especially for minority students. Oklahoma City, a public school teacher, says students yell, curse, hit, and scream at teachers, knowing there's nothing a teacher can do. In Milwaukee, a 16-year-old black student last August knocked a teacher to the ground and punched him over and over. A sixth grader tried to strangle a staffer with his lanyard and faced no consequences. Amazing. (laughs) White people stop teaching in the public school system. You're putting your lives at risk. So Joel asked during the break, why don't these teach, these white teachers fight these students back rather than let them destroy their hearing and all that? Uh, if they do, Joel, they lose their jobs, they lose their careers, and end up in jail. James, you mentioned that. Um, you go ahead, Joel. Oh, no. I was just saying that makes, that makes sense. But still, I'd rather fight back and can hear. Right. <laughs> Send me to jail. At least I can hear. And have my memory. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, and James, you said there is a teacher who's... Uh, it, yeah, there was a 60-something-year-old teacher who just, he got in trouble. He's being charged, actually, because he, when a, te- when a student almost started to put his hands on him, the teacher just charged forward and like put, slammed him on the, uh, on the lunch table and just kind of dragged him across just to protect himself. Basically, or maybe he went, maybe he just snapped or something, but he basically like had, had the kid in like a chokehold and down like far away from him and was just dragging him across. And there was video of it. And the kid's lawyer is, they're, they're prosecuting this teacher. He, I think he's, 
I think he's fired. I don't know. No, Amazing. He's, he's lost his livelihood for now. And then there's this UCLA, so-called UCLA civil rights professor. Yeah. Uh, there's a UCLA civil rights professor, Daniel Lawson. He's defending the uh, bad kids. He says it's important to put the debate about the safety of students and teachers to one side. Safety also includes protection from oppression and bigotry. Amazing. Giving these students a reason to attack the teachers. Yeah. You know, what I don't understand, white people are kind of interesting to me. Why would they go and learn how to become a teacher, spend all that money and time, and then go and teach in the hood with these black kids? I don't get that. Yeah. Why is that? You're white. Why? 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 <laughs> I don't know. Why don't do they do that? Because they can go to the nice schools and teach or private school and teach. They don't have to go in the hood and deal with a bunch of black, godless, animal-like children who have been told that they're the problem. I don't know. Sometimes either the pickings are slim as far as teaching jobs go, and you have to, or else it's your hometown, or a, or you have a bleeding heart for these poor little kids. And now you got a bleeding face. Mm-hmm. And bleeding ears and bleeding mind. I don't understand white people. I just don't get it. Yeah. I really don't understand that. Why would you go and teach where your enemy is hating you? And these kids don't have any love. They don't have any feelings about taking a life. They have no respect for the adults. And yet the white teachers show up. Well, we are just going there to help them out. We just love the colors. <laughs> they don't say colors anymore. What do they say? I don't know, but they don't say colors. <laughs> oh, we just love the African Americans. We want to prove that we are not racist. So what we are going to do, we're going to spend $100,000 and get educated, and we're going to go and let the blacks beat the hell out of us. Just to show... That we are not racist. <laughs> I like your white voice. You do? <laughs> <laughs> it is so amazing to me. <laughs> I just don't, you can't even get me to go to the hood and teach. I'll go down there and tell the truth and leave. <laughs> Amy, a first time call out of Kentucky. Amy, can you help me to understand why do white men and women spend a hundred thousand dollars to become a teacher, and then go into the hood and let the black folks beat the hell out of them? Absolutely not. The only reason I can see is that the government will forgive part of their student loans if they go into underprivileged communities to teach. That's amazing. They're putting their I lives at right. They're putting their lives at risk to save a dollar. I wouldn't do it. My life is worth way more than a little bit of money. And then they end up spending more money because now they have medical bills to pay and legal bills and legal bills. Amazing.